My name is Dan Nardi. It's actually Danny. Uh, I've been going by Dan for so long, I forget my first name sometimes. Um, I've been here in this community for approximately 40 years now. Uh, a lot of uh, what has to do with myself as an artist really begins in so many ways here and, and has remained here. Um, so uh, at the beginning I was uh, going back to school uh, when I was about 24 and thinking I would go into art education and my interest really was in painting and um, dropped art education as a as an idea maybe after a semester because I didn't really want to spend my time learning how to teach. I was more interested in learning things for myself and I was really invigorated by other students around me and just this freedom that painting had. Uh, and so essentially I did my bachelor's degree in studio painting uh, with a minor in drawing and then did an MS the same way. Um, the thing that I'm sure people hearing that and looking at my work today are kind of wondering, well, how did this come about? And that's um, really due to the, like the last semester that I was in school. I was getting, um, when, uh, working on my master's and I was uh, getting really pretty confused about the whole painterly plane and uh, becoming much more interested in some things were minimalistic, uh, some things that were becoming more object-like but still involved color and surface like a painting, but I wanted to take it to a much more physical way, uh, a different kind of territory to, to enter into. And so I actually just started building things at that time that uh, I think my, my graduate show, the, the majority of them looked like uh, they related back to stone or even concrete, uh, which I was looking at quite a lot um, and looking for expressions in broken concrete and sidewalks and just really trying to bring that some way literal to uh, the work that I was doing. I think that when I first began um, with this interest in, in concrete, but also in constructing things. I, I was working from an incredibly rudimentary kind of source. I, I had no training uh, in construction. I had no understanding of actually how to make or build something. So I was moving through that at my own speed and working with materials and means that were not complicated. And so uh, I really quite literally was teaching myself, but I, as I worked with both kinds of materials, both uh, materials I'd get uh, at a hardware store or a lumber yard, uh, some of those went into shaping some early concrete uh, form work, and some of those just became uh, the, the medium that I would make wall pieces from predominantly. So I found that in working with these materials, um, the, the concrete was satisfying basically my need to become very three-dimensional in a freestanding manner. Uh, and the same materials uh, would, would also, uh, to, to shape the concrete would also allow me to build things for the wall. So I, I still had this interest in wall work, which relates back to painting, and uh, some of the, the coloration that I started to return to uh, in concrete came back to painting in very subtle tints and hues, striations, uh, which for me really kind of go back to color field painting, just atmospheric kind of things. So my, my interest in both things, uh, whether it was wall or freestanding, was to deal with what I was then starting to understand as uh, very man-made forms, uh, oftentimes very geometric, and then be infused with uh, an organic quality, uh, qualities of nature themselves in this 
this dichotomy, uh, the mix between uh, man and nature, and that's, that's remained for all these years. I had lost, I guess, enthusiasm for anything pictorial, um, but as an object, it shapes space around it. Uh, and, uh, and I actually, um, depending on the scale of things, uh, it, it shapes the space almost like a, having a persona, like a person standing right there in the room, only this is uh, a whole other entity. But you, you really, I know for me, I've really caught up for quite a while with creating freestanding works that were just right at human size, just to, uh, uh, in some way, uh, truly em embody that that sort of feeling that this actually had had a, a personal kind of presence and so when we get into to, to sculptural form uh, that there uh, this presence really is uh, I, I think uh, always been a very intriguing thing to me so when it becomes um, say the things on that I would do as a wall construction uh, then I think once again that the painting starts to come back in and uh, the, the work can have a very structural, uh, physical kind of composition to it. But then the finer sort of nuances of where materials change or meet or when I'm gluing paper down to wood uh, or working with some kind of putties on wood, then, then I'm back in that sort of painting thing again and uh, thinking more uh, about composition within a structural composition, which is very intriguing to me. Um, can be a little confusing sometimes. And I would say that probably what becomes confusing is that when I have an initial idea to, to start one of these works, um, I always try to leave myself some room for letting it talk to me. Um, a lot of times what will happen is I'll get to uh, the point where I've constructed what it is that is going to take me into the next stage and then it stops me. Uh, because it's looking pretty complete at, the, at that point. And uh, that's, that's where I get into, I think, the strongest sort of dialogue that's almost like a fight with myself uh, and trying to uh, resolve how far do I take this? And what, what is it really saying? Because it's already speaking to me in, at one level. And I, um, I sometimes get really hung up about where I'm at with it. And so there, that becomes the time when um, I, I do take that luxury of letting it sit, letting it be on the wall, letting it stand on the floor uh, for sometimes a pretty long period of time before I um, either think, well, that must be it, or no, now I know what I want to do. So it's, it's an unusual kind of dialogue that goes on. It is this sort of part of my being that is, I'm incredibly aware of it and I, I try to find a way to keep it in balance that um, sometimes I think if I put it out in the open and talk about it too much uh, I become like I am now very uh, very aware uh, of trying to put something in words that I know deep down exists in a much different manner and it's all it's all really the essence of feeling and I understand it on that level um, I think that um, there is for a lot of artists that sort of spiritual uh, element uh, that we thrive on uh, that comes from deep down within and all kinds of other things can be affecting your life uh, and your life affects your work and uh, 
it remains the one thing that that really gives you strength and gives you hope keeps you moving forward because you you just don't want to let it go you know that that's that's the essence it actually means very much to me I've, I've got a long history with the Arts Center um, my my first experience uh, was literally when I was still uh, in grad school and had a studio in a building downtown where the art center was on the second floor of that. There were, there were artists like myself uh, all in school up on the very top floor, different studios. There was a dance group that we shared a space with. It had a, an alternative gallery uh, there. But on the, the middle floor was the most elegant floor. It was, it was like a club. This, this was some kind of a gentleman's club, this building. Uh, and that's where the art center was. And so I became familiar with, uh, with the art center and uh, the people who were involved in it at that time. And then um, after I graduated, I, I worked uh, for the art center uh, teaching a, a painting class um, and always uh, stayed in touch. Um, but essentially this, it, it's one of those true community uh, treasures that uh, as, as an artist, uh, I think there are a number of us who have stayed here and it's uh, one of the best things about staying here is, is the Art Center. Uh, so it, it, it really does connect, connect us to a whole nother audience uh, that's outside the academic world. Uh, and um, it's, it means a lot to me. It means quite a bit, and uh, I'm just really happy to be involved to the, this degree of uh, showing a, a body of work at this point in time. Um, so I, I'm very appreciative of that.